Hello, d and RPGers, Game Masters, and such. I'm still talking about White Lies. This is part two about the White Box OSR style spy game. Okay, and the first one's all about the book. This one's about my video website. Um, and it has a bunch of PDFs and stuff. What you could do is go down to the description. You could hit the link and go use anything you see here for whatever you want. Uh, Bill Logan makes this thing entirely free on DriveThruRPG. So I kind of took it and did a little more with it. It's, it's all his stuff. So, But the thing about it was like, uh, use it if you can use it or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I just think it's a fun game and you should give it a try. All right. I'm going to go through some things I put on my website that make it a little fun. I, I play online with friends. And when I do, I like to use a dice roller. This is the simplest thing I've created. So if you click this, uh, you just can easily do a dice roll. And this is all off uh, one, you know, a D6 and a D20. So obviously this is a single D6, two, three, four, five, and six and seven. And obviously it gives you multiples of things. I, I don't think it's exactly random because I don't think anything ever is, but uh, but it's fun. It makes it a lot easier doing your rolls, and I keep rolls above the table. So there's something fun for use. You know, hyperlink it, whatever you want to do, right? Second thing I want to show you is there's other ones, too, that can be used. So I also made a ping library, and I'll show you why real quick. Let's suppose I'm going to do something, and I want to put a spy in a scene. I can grab the guy, and you can do this. Just copy the image, and let's say I'm making my images in Google uh, Slides. I put them in here. I put them where I want them, and I can shrink them down. And I'll show you how, how I'm using that in some of my little, I guess, adventures I'm making. So I like to use the silhouettes that are in the book because it's such a cool idea, right? So I make the little adventure, and I'm saying there's a spy down here in this corner. And obviously, you can make this as big as you want when you're, when you're doing your thing, which makes it kind of cool, right? So if you look at this, there's a whole bunch to choose from you know burglars and spies elites and guards and you know if you if you need a security guard the same thing these are um uh transparent pings right so you can put these things in here well okay i got it yeah okay control v let's put them in so here's the other guy um once again like i said this is for your use in the game and i'll show you how i use mine you can put your guys to be where you want but that's just an example let's get rid of that um let's take a look at the rest of the website what i got going on there is i do a crit fumble table okay so i have one for my other games people like it so if you read it roll to 20 or or one you get to play a little bit with it and I have things like ricochet. Obviously, there's a lot of gunfire or you can deflect when you're using a knife or something and hits off the wristband or something. You can have fun with it, but it's a way of kind of varying up the fumbles or the, actually the successes, you know. Um, I also have on this thing, and I do 2D6 skill checks, and I'll explain why. I think this is a much simpler way, especially when working with kids. You get your bonuses. And let's say you have a 17, you get a plus two. And let's say you also get investigative. So you get another one, so you get a plus three. So you roll 2d6, add three to it, and you got to beat an eight. It's <clears throat> easier than the other. I don't know why the 1d6 comes out very confusing when I try to explain it. But it does. And so therefore, I try to avoid it. I'll show you what is rules is written. But it seems like people kind of get it a little goofy. And it's probably just the teacher, which would be me, All right? So, rules is written 1D6 checks. This is on page 8. It says uh, most actions, you know, you may not need anything adjudicated by the administrator, okay? So, that the idea behind this is it's just uh, you roll D6. If you roll 4 or higher, which is 4 plus, so it's 4, 5, or 6, that's 50-50 shot, you're successful, okay? I, the problem with that is that... It, it, it kind of breaks when you get too many bonuses. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean as I, I kind of go through it. So you get your own special skill training depending on what you're doing. So this is plus one when you start, and then it bumps up to plus two at fourth level and plus three at eighth level. Okay, now suppose let's, let's take an investigator, and you're going to do an interrogation or work on a computer. You're going to get a plus one. And let's say you take your strongest thing, which is your intelligence, and make it like a 17. You get a plus two. So you get a plus three, okay? And you're already at a plus four. So it, it kind of breaks. It's too much, essentially, right? 
So it's basically you get a six out of six, unless you cap it and say you can never, you can you always have to have a one out of six chance of failure, and then therefore you're kind of changing the rules a little bit. I, I think it kind of breaks a little bit. That's just what I'm finding out. Let, I'll give you a, a more specific example. All right. So this is the rules as written situation here. Okay, so I'm gonna move my picture down a little bit so you can see all the stats here. Without a bonus, you get you have to roll four or higher. So you get a 50-50 on any kind of skill check the DM says. Now he can make it harder, and I'll show you what that looks like when you start doing that to the table, right? So it's a three out of six or fifty percent. Now, if you get a plus one, that means you roll three or higher. So you got a four to six at sixty-six percent. And if you have a plus two, let's say you have a seventeen. What do you got? 87%. Now, the thing is, it's supposed you're also gifted in that. That's the problem about it. Say you have an intelligence of 17, which is plus two, and you get a plus one because you're good at computers. Do you cap it and say you just have to roll a two or higher? Because if you say one or higher, that means every time you do a task, you're 100% successful, which means why even have the skill? Because you're always going to get it right. So it gets kind of confusing. And then this is where we have problems. This is one of my other videos, and you can click on that to see this thing. I talked about skill checks, and this would be the normal route, okay? And if it gets harder, what happens is your odds of being successful get reduced. I, I go into the video pretty in-depth about this, and as you get your bonuses, you can get almost down here into that. I'm going to move this over here to the epic range of success, which is down here, like a one out of six to do an epic thing. And if we took the way it's written... How would you say in white lies they become you have to roll above that number so the chance of doing something without a modifier a normal activity and you have a minus two it's you got to roll a six to be successful okay and let's say if it's a minus one you got to roll a five or a six and a zero it's a four five or six so it's a 50 50 once you get to zero that's how this is written i, I don't want to belabor this because like i said i don't tend i use it with I think just with Mike and I don't use it with other people I, it tends to confuse things that's why I've moved to the 2d6 it seems to be much more successful and looking back at the 2d6 you can slide this right your success rate I'm making it eight partial success with was to be truly successful is a nine so I already adjusted it because of all the bonuses that people get and it worked really nice in the game. I'm just saying, like, you might want to take that as consideration. Some people say you can use the 3D6, you know, and you can still put all the stats on there. Uh, 2D6 is fine with me. You can do anything you want. I just think that if you tier things like this, it gives you a little more wiggle room for when they have these stats that they get too many bonuses and then there's it, it ruins the idea of actually doing any die roll. That's just a point being made, okay? Once again, everybody does their thing. So this is all the PDFs I got off the drive through RPG, right? And I actually went through, um, and since I'm doing a 2D6 check, and let's say my investigator, which is Roz, decides that she's going to check the computer bank on um, typical, let's say, Hitman, what I got look forward to, and if she passes the check based on what she's doing, I would click this and give her the information that you see here so they kind of know what they're walking into as far as a villain. And that might be fun. They say, this is typical, but... They really don't know if it's a typical hitman or not. Let's just say this is what we know. So they can say, well, he could get a plus three on his rolls. He could get this. Again. So maybe it may be fun. It may be something like that's the cool thing about White Star is that you can scan a ship and get an entire map. In this one, they can do. They can scan it and get the whole layout of things by hacking into a computer system. It makes it a little, a little fun when you start doing these kind of things. Okay. So looking at more of this, so I kind of align them based on uh, their areas of expertise. In this case, like I put the independents together, which tend not to be affiliated with anybody. Then you have the organization, which is your spies. I have my alien group, and I have this thing called the strange, reported but not confirmed. These are different monsters and stuff that they can run into that's, you know, who, you know what I'm saying, like werewolves or malformians or things. I'm just having some fun with the kids. We haven't really got to any of these things yet. So I also put the soldiers, the zealots, guards, law enforcement, and bestiality. And I really do like the fact that they make these things in a little bundle here. So if they do, oh, what, what do they usually carry? What's going to happen? What, what could happen if we run into these guys? It at least gives them kind of more of an outlook on what they can expect a little bit. And, of course, you can modify it as you go, which makes it kind of fun, right? So let me show you how you could do an adventure with this. And that's kind of, this is the beauty of doing uh 
a modern day RPG, okay, if you're into modern day RPGs, is that I, their first thing they went to, I, I picked something interesting. In this case, um, a bunker. I, this is not, none of this is real, but it's so fun. The Maryland National Guard has a nice little um, area down here in Salisbury, Maryland. If you're to look at it from the outside, it's got this big fence that goes all the way around the whole thing, and it's it's a big building, okay? And we've seen it, and I've kind of joked, there's no ground bunker there. So I decided to make, uh, make the thing based on this concept. So uh, they turned around, and I made this whole roomed-in area, okay? And uh, I, I, I say, well, first of all, we have to decide how we're going to get there. So this, I gave them the map, Salisbury. This is at the Civil Air Patrol or down here in Wacomico County. And on top of it, I said, you have two different means of getting there. One of them is by car, except you're going to get stopped in three different locations. Actually, when you get the car and these four different things, that's where the transporter comes in or the sweet-talking um, infantrator to kind of get them through different areas that have been detected. Okay, Or they also had a flight plan they could do you can fly into Dover Air Force Base but then they have to kind of somehow conceal themselves from the Air Force as they truck on down to here to do the investigation it kind of makes it fun because of course this is Google Maps so it's someplace that they know for kids it was really kind of cool all right they had to find a transportation in this case <laughs> they, they found a truck I put it in after the fact because it was too funny uh, they kind of, I mean, my wife was hysterical coming up with some of the stuff that she was. And so they found a truck that was uh, big 18 wheelers that filled with Chinese noodles and they were driving it. And it was yellow. So I found a truck that looked like that surprisingly online for this whole thing. So when they do the bunker investigation, what I did is um, these are just hyperlinks when I put it together. And this is the overall map you can see. And every time they go to a room, you click a button and you'll see something. And it, it kind of went through their thing. Okay. Now. This was super fun, okay? So they come down and they have their investigation. I, I've taken it a step further, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Um, so the next one, if you can think about it, I uh, and this is the cool thing with your Google Maps. You can show, like, a map. This is Salisbury, Maryland. This is where we live. And I say, well, the, you know, the investigation they're going to do is pretty interesting. They, they take a close-up picture of the map. They say there's supposed to be some kind of traffic circle that never shows up on photographs from, from the Google satellites or the spy satellites, you know what I'm saying? And they're saying, but we know for a fact these things are on the ground. So I show, this is what the, the it's an obelisk and they believe somehow it's involved with some kind of underground, you know, thing underneath it. And so the idea is to get kids like interested in something you see in Salisbury in a very imaginative sense. This is kind of twisted. And so once again, they got to go in and uh, do an investigation. And when they do an investigation, let's say they're going to go down into the room. And let's say if they don't, if they roll 2D6, can we do a scan of the map? They're hacking into it. And, and if they're highly successful, let's say 12. So they do 2D6 and she gets a bonus of 3. She gets a 12. You get a scan of the entire map and they can kind of use this. If they fail the scan, that's the funny thing, they're going to have to walk in and find, first of all, find the door. And they find the door. They come in and then basically this is where I've inserted guys into the map. That are the pings now we decided to kind of go this route or i decided to go this route so i don't actually show people's faces it's a lot more fun this way they can just kind of it's imaginative when you're working with kids you can see there's a security officer here so like i said the fun thing about this is that and they got a new transport vehicle it's a it's a momo noodle truck they're very excited about that one but it's fun like i said and it's modern and you can actually use places you can live somewhere in wisconsin and use your town as as the beginning part for their fbi investigation of course this is all x files for us so we're going to be doing investigation of you know in this case i think these are aliens in here somewhere i don't know where i put them no not here i think maybe room nine no this is fun there they are the Anuki, they were involved with Nibiru, and so so obviously all these things will have some kind of weird x file -y kind of thing. We actually have another one, too, we're going to try, and um, this is down Dame's Quarter, where they're eventually going to uh, find the Chubla car. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, they, they go around and they talk to people, and let's say they go down here to uh, the, the uh, Money Bay Furniture, right, which is number four. They click on this, they can talk to Brandon Money's and the brothers here, and they keep saying, well, they're saying things are being torn up here at the furniture store. But I mean, it's like this investigation. And like I said, if they threw a fox or, or smell, they come in here blocking, they're trying to figure out what's going on. So it's all, it's all fun. <clears throat> Once again, feel free to kind of have the game, play the game if you want. 
off of my website and have some fun there. Of course, I have like this guy here that can be a possible cult leader in the middle of all those things. You don't know what's going on. It's just a big spin on things. But um, like I said, it's a fun game. So if you give it a try, you like it, play with your friends. Excellent. Uh, like I said, Bill Logan did a great job putting this together. So my kudos to him. And with that, I hope you have a good day. Enjoy yourselves.